Hello and welcome to Infinity. We just come to the last few changes to Affinity Photo 2.1. They are these down to here. They, these further down don't count because I'm only doing the desktop and these as we can see for the symbol down here are all iPad changes. So first one here is measure and area tool. I'm also going to do the place tool because this this is separate only really because it's in published for two here and infinity photo only for this one. So what are these things? So if you want to change then edit and move around and even add tools over here, then you can do it by going to view and customize tools here. Now you can take any of those tools, even the sub menu items and drag them into here. And you can also drag them out again, just let them go outside to remove them. So here are three tools which aren't normally there. So I drag this one onto here. I'll just put them on the bottom. This one on the bottom here. And the third one down here. I'm mostly interested in photography and not all these are particularly useful, but they're graphics and sometimes you want to do graphic kinds of things. So what I've done, I just close down here. And now what are these things here? Well, the first one is the place tool. It's exactly the same as file place. So I'll just click on this and you can take any photograph or shape that you can bring in and double click on that and drag that in like this and you just need to drag it to size it and then you can resize it and so on and move it around. So this is great if you want to produce an album or something like that. If you hover over here notice it says image there whereas normally here it says pixel. So an image is a more complex file than straight pixel because it calls or it contains all the extra data from that file type and you can import like this, you can place dot air photo pictures and so on, which contain layers and all that kind of stuff as well. So I can just click on here, grab another one and drag that in, click on here, like another one and see, it's just a quicker way of adding pictures. So, and they just put them in like this so I can shift click those and delete them. So that's what the place does. It's just a little bit quicker going file place if you're doing things like making up pages of photographs. The next one here is the measure tool. So this is kind of kind of very much a graphics thing, but you can use it to measure pixels and things. So literally let's take say the distance between these two here. I click on one and I drag across here. I say I can move it here, but if I hold down the shift key it anchors it left and right. So I can measure exactly the number of pixels between things. So that's 377. Uh, if I start again, it disappears. It only does one at a time, but it also lets me check, for example, are these the same? No, actually this one's a little bit wider. So you can start looking at sizes of things and check whether things are the same size and so on, which are useful if you want to create kind of variation and repetition and rhythm and so on within pictures. If you do something like you put in a box here and another box here, then the measure tool here will snap to the edge of those there. So you hold on the shift, see the shift equals red when I hold on shift, and it'll snap onto the end of that there. So it will snap to shapes to give you the exact distance there. And what about this one here, the area tool? Well, if I've got a shape like this, a rectangle here, Notice I have a hover over here. It says area and it's the number of square pixels within there, which is quite a lot. So, and it changes the color. So I click on the other one over here. Let's click on this one here. There we go. And then this one's got that area there. Not that useful for photography. I can't think of something the way by you'd use it, but that's what it is. Anyway, let's have a look at the next one. This is the zoom tool and it's very, very simple. And if we get this here is if I've got a the develop persona here. So I've got a photograph here that's just come in as raw. 
all it means is if I go to the zoom tool here, it's just added the percentage you can put in here, drop down values there, or you can drag it here. And those snap points are kind of the same as the ones you've got in that drop down there, which is basically the same as you're getting in the photo persona. Let's now go to the next one here. And we're looking down here. Oh no, that's the last one. We have gone through this here. I'm just going to do one bonus point here, which is that something that has been added is not talked about there, but I would quite like it. And this is that the mask layer here, if you clicked it in version two, it gave you a whole bunch of options. But for a lot of uses, you just want an ordinary mask. You don't want to put in a luminosity mask just by clicking this here. So this has done this here. So if I click the background here and I click there, just put in a straight ordinary mask underneath this in the way that it used to in version one, which is kind of nice. What about those luminosity masks and so on? Well, if I right click on it, these are still here. So you have to do that with this. Mask and empty mask is simply put mask is a white mask, empty mask is a black mask. Otherwise, I can do something like a luminosity mask. And here, this is if I bring this down here and bring this curve up here, I start to get effects with this. They fixed a bug in here where if it hit this there and you've got this curve here, it couldn't handle it, but now it can. It does it perfectly well. So that's a bug fix which I reported. So maybe other people found it as well, but it's nice to see it fixed. Anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for watching. And the next video will be back to normal sort of how to do things with photographs. That's it and thank you very much for watching.